All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to uh, another special edition episode of uh, Movers and Shakers Unlimited. Uh, I'm your host, Brandon Troy. And uh, as I said, in this special edition episode uh, known as SDCC Peeps, the whole purpose or the idea behind it is to really celebrate the friendships that are sparked uh, out of your time that's spent uh, at Comic-Con. Uh, so uh, give me a moment and I will introduce uh, each of our guests. First up, I have Tim Luddy. What's up, man? Under the Capes. How you doing, man? Hey, Brandon. How's it going, man? Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. All right. So give me one moment. Introduce our other uh, guests for today. Mr. Najir Chambers, what's going on, man? How you doing? What's up, my guy? How's it going? It's going well, man. It's going well. Um, so uh, thank you, gentlemen, so much for uh, hopping on on this episode. As I said, the special edition episode for SBCC Peeps. Um, just uh, uh, just to, to introduce the two gentlemen uh, uh, here, I really had to backtrack, Tim, um, on when, when we met. I felt that it was uh, just because it seemed like yesterday that it was uh, uh, just yet last year. But in fact, it has been three years. It has been three years. It's hard to believe that it's been that long, but it's been three years. Um, uh, for those of you that are not familiar with uh, with Tim's work, uh, he has a podcast uh, under the capes that I highly recommend you guys uh, check out. Follows a lot of you know entrepreneurs, especially within our geekdom uh, community. Um, but uh, before we continue further, on, uh, send it down to Mr. Chambers as well. Um, Nigeria, we go back, geez, maybe four or five five years, um, I want to say, and we were able to actually uh, touch base in the the film community uh, with back at home with a lot of the advanced screenings that uh, happened. Um, but I know in, in terms of of, uh, of cons, um, Nigeria is well versed when it comes to cons. And and I remember, you know, providing or 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 that time where he made the leap to, you know, start going to uh, uh, Comic Con and hasn't looked back since. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, with that being said, uh, for each of you, can you talk further to uh, to your respective uh, outlets? Sure, I go. Okay. Uh, you know, it's kind of weird too, uh, because you know, thinking about about what I know about you and and your days in balling and stuff like that, I actually should have known you in a long, long time because you run you ran around the same circles of people I knew. So it's kind of weird how things overall come Work full out. circle. Yeah, yeah, and also too to Tim's outlet, like I really like the podcast because I like how he highlights the people who do the hard work, and a lot of people like to go for the big flashy names or the you know, the ones who've already done, did the hard work and so on and, and kind of sitting on their pedestal a little bit. But Tim's kind of really showed the people who's really still in the trenches and stuff. So, like, I, I definitely recommend right. checking it out as well. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, but uh, let's see. Where do I start? First of all, when it comes down to Comic-Con and you, Brandon, I got to say, Brandon knows how to navigate a con like no other. And there's been... There's been the one year where we both were there and we didn't see each other, but he was literally every place I wasn't. <laughs> it was like, hey, Brian, did you get in that IMDb party? He was like, yeah, I was in there. I was like, dang, bro. I was like, did you get in that sci fi party? He's like, yeah, I was in there. I was like, dang, like <laughs> all of them. So, but, uh, you know, the con thing is, is kind of weird. It's kind of bittersweet right now to kind of talk about it because, like, what's happening with con at home and so on. But, but anyway, First time I've been to San Diego was two years ago, um, under uh, with with Sam Leggett and JVS. Uh, it was a defining first year, but man, I'm telling you, it makes you lose weight quick because it's so much to do, it's overwhelming, and it, but it's so fun, it's life changing. And then last year I went kind of um, as the um, as the lead on site for it, and kind of trying to a man in a team is such a responsibility. But yet it's still so much fun. So um, it's just cool to see all the cosplayers. It's cool to go to 
some of the best panels in the world, uh, the exclusive, all the swag that you get to take away. And there's nothing better than walking through the gas lamp district in San Diego and then bumping into anybody at any time. So it's just, it's really just beyond just the convention. Uh, but it's really about the city, nerds taking over the city, and, and anybody that's a nerd can appreciate that. Yeah, and it's funny you uh, you said Brandon's everywhere at Comic Con and all the parties because I think um, when it was three years ago I met you, uh, Brandon, at my first Game of Bloggers party uh, on the Wednesday of Comic Con, and that was when I had like just started the podcast a couple months before that, so I was trying to trying to meet other like-minded podcasters and bloggers to have on the show, and um, and yeah, that's an awesome event put on by Tony Kim, uh, or it was when we Shout were out Tony at Comic um and then yeah i had you on the show like um a couple weeks after comic-con i think um and you had some awesome advice like like you were saying a lot of um so the the entrepreneur podcast is <clears throat> talking to like podcasters and bloggers and people working in the industry and you had a ton of advice about like working cons getting you know interviewing people at conventions because you do a ton of that um, so that was uh, that was a really good episode for a lot of good advice for me as I was trying to get into more like interviewing and get better at that part of it. Definitely. Um, so to speak to that, guys, and you kind of, you know, hop, uh, hopped in and, and jumped the horse, which is perfectly uh, a jump the drum, so to speak, um, uh, which is perfectly fine. So I'm going to actually uh, pass it on to you, uh, Tim, for this uh, next portion is uh talk a little bit more to you know that that first uh san diego comic-con for you and and what that best memory was from that first con Ooh, best memory um yeah so i was actually i've been sharing stuff all week and um that's been hard uh, man seeing all these memories <laughs> that keep popping up and and, okay. and most of my friends are all comic-con peeps so like my whole feed is like san diego stuff it's hard but no nah, i'm sorry go Go ahead. <laughs> and at least at least everyone's doing the same thing, you know, where they're all living vicariously through Twitter. It's not like you're missing it and watching everyone post like, oh, man, did you see this big announcement? <laughs> like, we're all on the same boat, at least. <laughs> but yeah, I, I uh, my group pretty much dove in like right off the bat. Um, it was me, my two sisters and uh, a couple of my buddies. And we were sleeping in Hall H for the Thursday panels uh, in costume and like right off the bat of it was I'd never gone to a convention like any convention before and we went right to San Diego Comic Con and it's like we're gonna <laughs> do it right we're gonna cosplay we're gonna be front row on the on the big panels and obviously we weren't we didn't realize how crazy it is <laughs> but uh, probably best memory from that year because I'd never experienced anything like this stuff was like, cause the first experience was just waiting in line with people. And it was an immediate, like, wait, all these people are my people. Like we're talking, you know, comics and movies and like, they all love the same stuff. And not only do they all love it. Cause I mean, everybody loves a good Marvel movie, but they're all like crazy about them. <laughs> so that was, that was that first experience of like, Oh, this place is awesome. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Nigeria? I know you were teasing it a bit uh, before, but my first year, right? Yeah, and that memory. Yeah, I think my first year, um, my uh, my best memory of it is, I mean, if you first of all, if you've never been to San Diego, it's, it's amazing. So I think my first year, I think my first big memory was just getting off the shuttle and just kind of in, uh, inhaling the atmosphere because it gets really real really quick and as much as it's so energetic and so much energy and and, and just positive vibes all around you it gets overwhelming because everyone's going in every direction <laughs> I, I i definitely think like just getting off the show the first time realizing like man this this is it but to be really really more in particular my my easily my my favorite memory of my first year was the opportunity to interview like somebody I just idolized forever. And that's Sean Schimmel. And I know he's at all the cons. Like he does, he does tons of appearances. He's not hard to find, but like 
considering how it was done and and the the people at Funimation how professional they were in handling it and the backdrop and just everything and it was for um it was for the new movie as well too so like that whole thing is happening and you know obviously Dragon Ball Super returning it was just like the perfect combination of like this cannot be happening happening right now and it didn't even feel like an interview because we were talking about cars for like 15 minutes <laughs> But like I, I, I just would never forget like how like like real that got really quick. It's like man, average Joe me is talking to somebody. I, I literally I idolize. I, I love the anime, but like his voice acting work is like second to none. And being able to sit across from him, next to him, and just have just regular conversation. And even like when the time was up, he wanted to talk more. And the hander was like. Hey, we got other people. He's like, well, but I want to talk about this. Like, it was real, 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 for real. So, yeah, first year, that was definitely the one when I was like, I've been injected by this. I'm coming back forever. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I, I, I can second you on that because uh, um, thinking back on my first year and thinking about how encompassed San Diego is to – Comic Con. Uh, you, I mean, you can you can talk to it. You, you can talk talk about it until you're you're blue in the face, but you can't really understand it until you've actually been there. That as soon as you get off the plane, you are inundated with Comic Con. Like the airport has Comic Con related uh, um, uh, uh, decorations to welcome you into uh, into San Diego. So, you know, right off the bat, there really isn't any time to like, quote, quote unquote, breathe like you're immediately inundated with San Diego Comic Con stuff. Um, so that that was something, you know, in, in uh, seconding, you know, what you were talking about, thinking of that. And then even with your your uh, DBZ memory, like I remember and, and it was surreal also um, when they were doing Resurrection F back back then before resurrection f came out and they would uh funimation was doing a huge push with with that film and they actually had the interviews happen at petco park so oh, nice so they actually had activations happening they had shut down petco park and they had activations for dragon ball z happening at petco park and so there were opportunities to talk with piccolo voice by piccolo behind frieza and like Thinking about how how long I have been watching like those shows, even growing up, and it was really surreal. If you watch the interview, it, it will seem like a like a, a standard run of the mill interview. But like in my head, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm speaking to Frieza. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> oh my. God. Like like I was like geeking out mate in a major way. But I mean, <laughs> I was able to keep my composure and, and just like do a, a, a standard interview. But yeah, like there, there are a lot of like outer body experiences like that where where uh um you have those surreal moments where you're like, wow, like I I'm speaking to so and so. I cannot believe I cannot believe where I'm at right now. I had never yeah. imagined that I would be speaking to so and so. Um, so yeah, all of those are you know awesome things about uh, uh, Comic Con. But in contrast, now we have this we have the virtual edition versus the the uh, live edition. So with that being said, making that adjustment for you guys, uh, how has that adjustment been? And and have you guys already put together our itinerary of what it is that you're checking out? And if so, what have you seen so far? Big difference is probably I put together the itinerary on Wednesday instead of having been <laughs> put it together for the past two months. Yeah, you're right about that. Like I haven't had a thousand Twitter notifications on for the past month. Yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, I, 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 I gotta put a disclaimer out there. And in, in root of true frustration, uh, virtual, uh, virtual Comic Con, Comic Con at home. For anybody who's always been wondering, like, what is the Comic Con experience? Please do not judge Comic Con by what's happening this year because everything about it to me is just cringing to me. And that's because the cons, I mean, this show is based off interactions, right? You know, your friendships and stuff that you made, you can't even interact in the videos that they post because the comments are off, they're not being live streamed. And even if they are pre recorded, which we know they are, uh, you know, they still can do um, premieres 
in which it can stream in real time. And all of that is just gone. So like the whole interaction aspect of the con is just it's has been taken away. So like whatever's happening right now as far as Comic Con at home, cool. There's there's good there's good content coming out, but like the whole essence of why we really truly like to go beyond just the content has been like striped from us. And that has just been the worst part. But like, yeah, putting my schedule together took absolutely like 20 minutes. Last year, you know, it was like hitting the rumor sheets because you're hearing about like, before Marvel came, there was this big gap on Saturday. And you're just like, something big is here. And Warner Brothers already pulled out. So like, is it going to be Marvel? And they're like, I can't be Marvel. And then Marvel came in for the kill. But like, that's the whole thrill of the scheduling. Like, you, there's there's a lot of easy confirmed stuff early, but it's all like, what's there? What's there? What are you gonna go to? Like, there's a big gap there. Oh, that seems to be the whole like CW slate right there, you know. But like, yeah, this year was just easy peasy, you know. Spending months ahead of time trying to like before the scheduling comes out, like, well, I bet this is gonna be at that hour, so we want to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Doing that investigative work. Absolutely. Yep. And the thing I was going to say, another caveat to that, too, or, or logistical um, element to that is if you're going, um, if you're covering the show, uh, for those of you that are not aware, you get email blasted like a, e like a month out from the show. So like there are tons and tons, piles upon piles of opportunities to do various things. But what will happen is you'll get notified or, or com they'll communicate to you about a month out and then you'll express your interest on whatever those things are. And then, it, then you'll just, you'll, you what you'll get is, oh, okay, gotcha. We, we, we've made note of your interest and we'll get back to you. And then the week of Comic-Con comes, you forget about half the stuff that you said that you were, that you said <laughs> that you were interested in. And you're like, oh, so, so the press room is such and such and it's happening at this time. I'm like, Oh right, that that was what I expressed interest in like two weeks ago. Where where you have to like make that adjustment, so you already have what you are planning to do with the programming piece, but then you have to readjust that once you start getting replies back from the requests that were that you put in a couple of weeks ago. So that that, that dynamic is very it can be very tricky to kind of navigate. It definitely takes a fine balance. Hey Brandon, what about the ones who try to like? who tried to be really imposing on the confirmation of your scheduling where they're just like yeah we're going to put you down for saturday at 1 p.m and it's like yeah so I, one i'm not going to be able to make that and two like i didn't confirm like what's happening right now like i said it, it's it's very much a, a a fine balance and i guess the thing that's also has been and, I, and i've commented on this is trying to find a balance if you are covering the show and you, you could either of you can can attest to this finding a fine balance of what it is that you want to provide for those that that check out uh your content and then also being a little selfish and and doing the stuff that you yourself enjoy as a fan because sometimes those things cross pollinate where where you know some of the things you're interested in others would be interested in too but sometimes you know your interest might be a little more niche in terms of like anime or certain films or uh, uh certain just c certain things that the show has to offer game video games what have you and it may not be something that the general public all would would be interested in or 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 invest time in in terms of you covering it so um just finding that that balance of of saying okay this day is going to be my media day of I'm doing press rooms and one on ones and all those things. This day is going to be my fan day. So I'm not going to do any press stuff. I'm going to go to all panels this day. And then like just really going back and forth and finding that balance of, mm -hmm. of what it is that you're going to do throughout the week, which can be it's not it's not a perfect science. Sometimes it, it, you really have to make some tough decisions, but uh, it, it, it can definitely be tricky when you're dealing with it in the live sense versus now where you can kind of, I, we, me and Tim, we were talking about offline, like you, you could do it at your leisure pretty much. Yeah, you can watch everything versus having to have your like first, second and third choice and make right. a decision on the go. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And not to mention these these panel halls aren't next door to each other. And <laughs> even if they are next door to each other, the security has you doing all these loop de loops, man. I, could you imagine right now during like the pandemic and COVID social distancing if they just try 
to implement something, how much more tedious it would be now as far as like the in entering the exit process. Like Hall H is at the end of the convention. And, you know, if you want to go, I, I can't even remember now, but like, for instance, if you want to go out and going out is as easy to the left, they'll be like, no, go to the right and go all the way around. And then when you re-enter, you got to come all the way back that way. It's just, it's just like little things like that, you know. And the re-entry, the re-entry tickets, like, you yeah. know, constant exchange of, of, of uh, you're, you're having, you know, the security touching the ticket, you're touching the ticket. Like, it, 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 it's, yeah, I, I, I completely get why we have a virtual edition versus because even under normal circumstances there are too many variables involved with when it when it comes to comic-con that it, adding a pan the pandemic to it would would make it nearly impossible to really to really uh uh, uh execute because I, I what i'm really thinking about is how gas lamp how downtown gas lamp looks through Comic Con week and how you know jam packed that area is not just on the sidewalks but just out on the street when they block out those certain portions of downtown gas lamp um, and trying to imagine you know social social distancing among that which is yep. be nearly impossible so imagining sprinting from the Hilton to the Marriott uh, with like three temperature checks in between <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's real. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but um, have there been any specific uh, programming pieces or, or panels that have happened perhaps, perhaps yesterday or even, I don't know if you guys checked out some of them on Wednesday, have there been ones that you have seen that you have enjoyed thus far? And if so, what were they? I think everybody watched The Boys, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, it's just because of the excitement of the show. Uh, the panel was okay and everything, but uh, again, I just think that uh, as far as the whole aspect of it being Comic Con, I enjoy it much more when it's more of a fan watching experience. Even when you when you go to Hall H, you know, there's always a question a, a, a question part for the fans, and that being taken away just kind of still puts a chip on my shoulder about it. But as far as the actual footage that they're shown, um, the little teaser was cool, and being able to hear how excited the cast is, and obviously them being uh, green lighted for season three, season three is yeah. all good news. So, you know, uh, for what it's worth, that's 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 been cool so far. Looking forward to The Walking Dead in about two hours. <laughs> right. That, that, <laughs> we were about to say we talk about that dynamic of of dealing with the uh, Pacific time versus Eastern Standard time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Later Tim. For us. Yeah, I, uh, the boys panel is great. I always love uh, getting those those kind of panels. Um, but yeah, like I watched uh, Building a Geek Brand, Surviving a Pandemic with Tony Kim and uh, Vampy Bit Me and a couple other uh, um, geeky business owners. And that was, that was a really great panel because they talked specifically about how businesses have had to... Um, change to for the pandemic Revent. but it was definitely like usually that panel is about half q a from the audience so that was it's it's definitely different this year they they provide a lot of great great insight this year because i think they kind of it's easy to tell a lot of the challenges geeky brands are going through right now but uh but yeah definitely definitely different <laughs> I was gonna say I'm trying to remember the one that I went to. Uh, they they had one with uh, horror uh, horror icon uh, Danielle Harris, um, where they were she was moderating a panel and I'm brain farting uh, on the the name of the panel, but uh, it basically had um, the various the various uh, uh, artists that you would have whenever you're putting together. A television project, a film project. So you had a couple of costume designers, you had a couple of uh, executive producers, of composers, all as panelists and talking about what their perspective was and and what their contribution would be in the giving in the given process of putting together a project, which was very interesting. So I highly recommend you guys check that out. Um, that was from yesterday. I uh, also checked out, which I also recommend, is uh, Marvel 616, um, where they were talking about, I guess this is going to be this uh, series where they will be highlighting a lot of like the obscure uh, characters and, and contributors to 
Marvel um, to its characters and, and shining a light on a lot of characters that perhaps many of us may not be familiar with as household names. And, and some of them that they dropped were pretty interesting in terms of their origins and even their names. So um, that one was was awesome. And of course, I, I checked out uh, uh, The Boys and we'll be checking out Walking Dead in a couple of hours as well. So definitely. Uh, for in, in terms of some of the other programming that's happening going forward, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I know you just touched on Walking Dead, Nigeria, but are there any other ones that that have uh, piqued your interest? I'm going to throw this one at everybody that can hear my voice right now. Is anybody excited for Deep Blue C three? <laughs> <laughs> I have that on my schedule and I don't know what to think about it. But um, the other little gem, so uh, you, you brought up a good point yesterday. And I think that there's certain things that just compel to us despite popularity. I know for me, anything Dragon Ball Z, I'm definitely going to go to. I remember even when you're at New York Comic Con, I think I skipped like Hellboy, which was obviously a good choice for now for the reunion for Boy Meets <laughs> World because yeah. that's what I like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, this, so I remember either two years ago, there was a panel that's also happening again this year, but with different people. And it's like hip hop and comics. Uh, that year it was with RZA and he, uh, he ended up screening his new movie that should be coming out at some point called Cutthroat City. Which I is swear he comes movie. every year. That is not free. He's he's come so many times. He's like yeah. he's like the uh, um uh, when it comes to like awesome con comparatively like Bill Lam uh, Lamar with yeah. like, awesome con. He comes all the time. But yeah. that was his first. That was his first time in all H, which was really cool. And like you know, RZA, you know Wu Tang Clan, whatever. And you say rapper, but like the guy as a martial art, his his psychology on the martial art is obviously stepping into the film world and everything. Um, and then the film cast was to star studded up and down the, the line so you know that was that was like something that i went in like okay i'm a, I'm a fan of this guy obviously i love hip-hop and i'm kind of wanting to see where how he's going to bridge the two but then also being able to talk about a project and so forth was like really really cool but anyway that's happening and again uh which is nine o'clock tonight here um is hip-hop and com comments which is cultures combining so again this is one of those ones where it's just like may not be a lot of buzz with it but it definitely has some notable names on it and i'm just curious to see what they're going to present because that's you know when you think about those two worlds anytime they kind of collide or or, or or collab shall i say um something interesting always comes out so definitely an interest to see where, that, where, where that's going to go and that's out of the mainstream like of things that's happening cool how about you? Yeah, I'm looking forward to um, Hellstrom later today. It's yeah. I was I was excited for it before, and it's it's going to be interesting with like seeing how Disney splits it up because it seems like that's the only Marvel thing going on Hulu right now. But <laughs> I mean, Hellstrom's such a cool uh, character. So, and it seems like the the tone of the show is like based on a couple pictures only. It seems like it's going to be really cool. So, looking forward to getting some some input there. Um, there's oh, Lovecraft Country is uh, also going to be today too. Yeah. That's that's a big one. Though. Yeah, that's that should be interesting. I'm I'm going to guess they're going to show significant footage of that since um they've already so certain people and press outlets have already seen episode one, which I seen was amazing. Uh, that's going. I'm I'm pretty sure this is going to be the series to talk about for the year. So. Uh, that's that's definitely worth checking out, folks. Just based, and I and I could just be making an assumption. I was going to say I feel that that might be uh, at least of this decade. It, it might be the new True Blood, possibly, potentially. The way True Blood was when it came out, it Lovecraft can definitely you know fit possibly uh, um, step into that into those shoes. I so, feel you. Yeah, I definitely feel you on that. So. Uh, but with with all that being said, guys, and I know we were talking about uh, all of these uh, uh, memories of Comic Con and, and what it's like. Um, I, I've also been chatting in, in prior episodes about what we foresee this virtual edition, its effect on other shows. 
I have my thoughts on it and, and I've, you know, talked at them, uh, talked about it ad nauseum. So I, I would love to hear, you know, your thoughts on, on what you think this year's edition might have on future shows. That's what, yeah, uh, a friend was talking, maybe they'll keep doing this year, like every year, but I don't think that's the route they're going to want to take yeah. just because it, it limits what studios are going to want to bring as far as exclusive exclusives. Yeah. Um, and it definitely takes away from the, the overall experience because um, nothing's gonna nothing's going to replace actually sitting in the hall and getting to getting to go up and ask some questions to uh, to the people and and experience it as a group. Um, maybe like I know New York Comic Con's been doing a lot more um, just like like one panel a weekend and then they'll do like a, a a you can instead of photo ops they now do like you can video chat with them for three minutes um so maybe cons will do like they have all the connections if they get the youtube live figured out a little bit more to actually make it more of a streaming experience maybe they'll start doing more like in between cons putting out a little bit more panels and content um but yeah i don't think it's gonna replace the the actual comic-con experience in any way yeah no clue where they go from here. I I, I I have to think of it this way: like Funimation just did a virtual con, which I thought they handled uh, really fun and interested. San Diego is the mecca of cons, and you know I'm I, I know they waited as far as they could to kind of see which way they were going to go. San Diego is also back in phase one right now too, um, but I, I I just I can't imagine them being able to think of it being any different than how it's been all these other years but with how things are they're going to have to so i think they're definitely going to be journeying down into a road of this unknown and they're going to try to put something together and it just won't be just as appealing as it's been for the previous years but uh it's just way too many factors especially when you got people coming from literally all over the world traveling might be an issue and com uh capacity is obviously going to be an issue People won't be able to cosplay the way they want to because of some of these things. So I don't know. I, I really do not know where it goes. Just glad to say that. Hey, I, you know, I have some good memories right now of how it used to be, and uh, I'll just be waiting patiently, kind of see where they go forward. But this this year is no sample of hope of like I'm so excited for next year. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It, there's no guarantee that in a year we're going to be back to 200,000 person gatherings. So. Uh yeah so how far in the future it's it continues to affect it uh it'll be interesting yeah well tell you what guys on a lighter note <laughs> <laughs> on a lighter note uh to to uh, wrap things up can you guys uh because i'd be interested to know i've always gotten different answers what what you say what you would say has been your best uh comic-con memory in the years that you have attended So I heard your stream earlier, Brandon. So I already know what you're going to say, and I'm not going to just echo that one. But yes, being in front of Hall H was fun because we got our seats. First of all, Brandon's my man, just to let y'all know. Like, he has my back. He's obviously older than me. He's just like my big brother. And he definitely was on my ass that entire day. <laughs> Get up. I was like, I'll be there in like two hours. And no, get here now. I was like, all right. So this is like crust still in my eyes no food nothing, but it, it all paid off because we got to be in the front of hall h and then even when we got there we did nothing wrong by the way we did nothing wrong we did exactly what i wish i could think of her name and i think i heard somebody say that she might be retiring but the one lady who runs hall h uh, the um the black lady with the dreads she gave the instructions she called to play we did what you wanted to do and some hall h faithful like they call themselves like team hall h or i don't know what it was they were in our ear like how did y'all guys get up here blah 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 blah, and that's all good but brandon's like look we're not moving <laughs> this is we were told to sit here and this is what we're doing and i'm thinking to myself like oh boy i don't i i, I don't want to like you know do something to the outlet for this and anything brandon's like nah we're not going nowhere and it just was an amazing ride to be in the very front seat of hall h doing a marvel uh slate that way we got marvel and we got the um cbs uh star trek yeah, universe yeah. slate it was an amazing 
tons of hours of no food. Like it was all <laughs> worth it. But that was the major one. But yeah, Brandon already mentioned that. Obviously, my I'm just gonna go back to the easy answer here. And that was uh earlier that Thursday, um at uh right outside of the convention, or excuse me, on the back side of the convention where they had the activation for Dragon Ball. And what they did was they did a Guinness World Book of Records um, event where they assembled the most people in the area at one time doing the Kamehameha. So that was awesome because not only was that just being part of a Guinness World Book of Records that which I've never That's done. That's a picture. That's your... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But like <laughs> next to Sean Schimmel doing so, uh, it's just like that childhood dream that never is supposed to come to life and not only did it come to life it's in the it's in the history the record book so that's like that was really 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 cool and i got some uh and then i got some um uh some swag to take away from that i think it's i can't see it but it is like right there but yeah it was a that was that was that was an awesome time people at the airport was watching me carry this big prop and i was like i don't care if my bags don't get home this is getting home right here I paid the check, and although I flew Southwest because I had four bags, right, and like you know, two luggage and two ones that could obviously carry on. I paid for one of those carry ons one because I knew they were going to press me out about that. So I don't care. This is not going under the the, the plane. I don't trust you guys with this. That thing sat on my lap the entire time. I was not playing. <laughs> Good times. How about you, man, Tim? Yeah, I think um, they probably. I mean, I. A huge highlight is always uh, Thursday walking the floor in in cosplay because it's the first time on the floor and it's usually months of work on a cosplay kind of finally like sometimes that morning hot glue and stuff together like finally coming together. Mm-hmm. But um, I think it was two years ago um, when they were still doing the Sci-Fi Live uh, from Comic Con up on the roof of the Marriott. Mm-hmm. Um, go in cosplay and they want it it's comic-con so they want it to look like comic-con so like cosplay yeah front row front row like here we go and then uh so two years ago i got to uh meet zachary levi who was hosting that and um nice yeah that was awesome because they were like yeah like we just surround him with cosplay and um <laughs> so I, I i got to be on that and um I, you know i went to shake his hand afterwards and <clears throat> I was dressed as cable. I dropped my huge cable gun and like broke on the floor. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 I'll, I'll get that. Nice to meet you. Nice. So it was, um, that was, that was a cool experience. And any, any time, like just walking around in costume, uh, is always, always really fun. I was going to say shout out. Cause, uh, if you guys if follow, follow Instagram and, and, uh, Tim has some pretty impressive, uh, cosplays. Um, mm-hmm. I, can, I can attest to that. So I would definitely, Encourage you to check uh, some of the ones that he that he has. Whether it's been cable, I know there's another one I'm, uh, that that you've done a bunch of times that were really really good. Even outside of cable, I'm trying to recall. I want to say it was uh, Deathstroke. Yeah, Deathstroke was the year before that. That was I, I learned that's a rough caution to be on the roof of the Marriott for three hours in, but uh, that was a good time. And then I mean, yeah, I'll- usually I, I'll usually do like. One costume that I'm dying in, like Deathstroke, just head to toe black armor. And then Cable was the next year, like, all right, I I need one arm completely free, nothing on my face. (laughs) And then the year after that, I was like, you know what, like two years ago, it wasn't that bad. I I did Beast. I was fursuit head to toe, like not not an inch of my body ventilated at all. Oh. And I was, I was like, people were trying to high five me. And I was like, no, like best I can do is a fist bump. It's still going to be a little sweaty, but uh, that's the best I can do for you. Right. Hey, um, man, that's, that's real commitment. You have to think about the distance you travel, the amount of people you bump into, the heat factor. It's, man, cosplayers who come near and are completely mobile, going in and out of the convention, are some real warriors. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> real. Dressed, dressed as beasts, no ventilation, but I was still running panel to panel, uh, making like a full Comic Con schedule uh, work. Yeah, and food is not just being thrown at your face. Food is a whole nother tactic. That. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So so I guess for me, I've, I've 
in all these episodes, I've gone over so many like mem memorable things that have happened at Comic Con, and, and I feel like with every single episode. In, in listening to each of each of you guys, each of the guests, and and thinking about uh, some of the the cool things that have happened at Comic Con, I guess just in general, the thing that, and hopefully you know we, we'll be back to normalcy come next year. I, I love the anticipation of of uh, of Comic Con of of as much as I was talking about like the logistics of, of putting together a schedule. I do enjoy you know, uh, uh, that part of it to, to be able to plan with, with, uh, you know, uh, you guys, the SDCC peeps, um, and, and planning a, you know, when, what, what does your itinerary look like? Uh, would you like to, why, why don't we, uh, if you're going to this panel, you know, I can catch you there at that panel. Uh, why, why don't we grab, um, afterwards? I know you have a busy itinerary, you know, why don't we grab, grab a, a dinner later on that day? Cause I know, all of us are super busy. We're not going to really have time to to touch base with each other or to reconnect with each other um, any other time during that week. But just being able to, you know, anticipate that that yeah, while it's great that we have social media and we have technology as we do now, uh, it, it still doesn't replace you know being able to hang out with with with, uh, with your peeps and and uh, you know grab a bite grab a drink, like whatever the case may be. And uh, just, you know, talk about not just con stuff, obviously, but like life stuff, like j just being able to, to interact with each other. So um, so with that being said, guys, thank you so much for uh, hopping on in this episode of uh, SDCC Peeps. Uh, can you tell folks before I let you guys go where uh, where folks can find you? Mm hmm. Also, Brandon, you put so much emphasis on technology. Oh, you're in a dead zone when you're out there. You can forget your cell phone ever working. <laughs> Where's Brandon at? Oh, man, I sent that message. You're like, dude, I just got your message. I'm like, dude, I sent that like eight hours ago. Yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> anyway, um, website, uh, biggobelgroupmedia.com. And that I do a bunch of just uh, media related stuff, whether it's uh, film reviews. Uh, both in comments, wrestling, pro wrestling, and other uh, nerd on things, so reviews, interviews, and all that other good stuff. Cool. And yeah, thanks, Brandon. This is uh, the one chance to get that Comic Con feeling a little bit of like catching up with people and uh, and talking. Um, but yeah, you can um, you can check out the Entrepreneur Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, anywhere, um, and at underthecapes.com and um, on Twitter at underthecapes. And I just started, uh, or actually for the past year, I've been contributing to Second Union um, at wearesecondunion.com. And cool. this week I posted a, um, a breakdown of some of the entrepreneurity panels, uh, like geek brands and industry stuff uh, that might, might interest some people. All right, awesome. Well, uh, there you guys have it. Uh, again, for those of you that are watching, thanks so much for uh, checking out this special edition episode of Moves and Shakers Unlimited. Uh, known as SDCC Peeps. Uh, I'm your host, Brandon Troy. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, obviously, which is what you're watching now uh, live, but you can also find us on Instagram at Movers Shakers Unlimited. You can find us on Twitter at Move and Shake UNLTD. Uh, you can find me at Brandon Troy ENT on Twitter and Brandon Troy underscore ENT on Instagram. So with that being said, uh, we do have, I want to say, at least one more episode of uh, SDCC Peeps uh, still to come. So be on the lookout for that and that announcement. Uh, still doing minutes when I'm able to, uh, minutes of, uh, of SDCC at home. So uh, make sure you're keeping track of that on Twitter and on Instagram as well. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Be safe out there and uh, see you soon. Bye. Thanks, guys.